there, it says in the press release that there are identified 46 voters who cast ballots not only in this state but in another state. What process did we use to identify those? I'm just cu curious as to how we know they voted in a different state. All right, Mr. Chairman, Senator Przanski, thank you for that uh, that question, and oh, oh. it's it's <laughs> it, it's been really um, you know having new technology tools to be able to go across state lines and to compare these data files, which, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, we didn't have any tools that could even have the, the computing ability to, to do this. So there were five states that participated in a, a feasibility study to see if this was something that could be um, utilized in other areas. We tested uh, over 11.5 million ballots or votes across those five states and so used a number of things. So national change of address forms, social security death index, our own vital statistics from our state, from Washington, Colorado, um, and the uh, Electronic Registration Information Center that we're a member of um, that helps us with identifying voters that, um, that, that move between states and just keeps those records updated because, frankly, a lot of people don't recognize that when they move, when they fill out their change of address form, it doesn't update their voter registration form or registration information in their state. And so we're trying to identify ways that we can keep the rolls as clean as possible. And this is one of the tools that we've been using, these different tools. And after having success with those over the last, you know, over the last few years, some of us had the questions like, well, can we now compare other states' voter histories um, using the same tools to be able to identify potential double voters? Follow up. So, is this re number of 46 represent only those five states, or is this nationwide based on the pilot that was already done? So, Mr. Chairman, Senator Przanski, those 46 is just within Oregon. Um, so, within those five states, um, there were 112, um, but you know, that doesn't mean that we had 46 out of 112. It would be about half of those because you had a match in another state. So, um, so 112 out of uh, out of 11.5 million records that were verified. So again, 0.001 percent of um, uh, that were identified. One follow up. So 11.5, whatever that million, that is for the five states. In other words, what I'm getting at Correct. is potentially if we had access for all 50 states. The number of 46 could be elevated, Mr. Chairman, Senator Przanski. Yes, um, and um, you know that's why we focused on the percentage because right. we think that would probably hold because it was pretty consistent uh, with what we learned from this feasibility study. Well, I'm glad you did that way. Yeah, and if I can follow up on that a little bit myself, the 46 that we're talking about are potential. Correct. Right. They're not verified that that's that they're really uh, duplicates at this point. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman, that is correct. Uh, we've turned those over to the Attorney General with the evidence that we have, and uh, they get to decide uh, um, and, and take the next steps, which is part of this feasibility study. So we'll be curious to see not only in Oregon but in the other four states um, you know, what comes about of these investigations. My assumption is that when this is all finished and we know, you know, if these were real or if they were not, that there will be another press release telling us what actually what the actuality was instead of the potential so mr chairman um i'm, I'm sure that that information will be made available i, th I think it will probably take a, a period of time and some cases are going to be faster than others for investigations um that's that's out of our control but um obviously when when cases are closed we'll be happy to share that information publicly publicly thank you other questions